Hello everybody, welcome back to Filament. We're here in these puzzles with color-coded floors. Very large room, so we have to light each section first in a group. And one way I've been trying to do that is by looking at which tiles have the most restricted access Focusing on those first. Now, this one and the one next to it look particularly scary because I'm going to have to go all the way around the rest of the level to get those to be anchored in. Which seems unlikely. I can do that. That's not going to be a sharp enough angle, is it? But if we go on the other side of this, we can do that as a pair. Then that doesn't work. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this one. That doesn't work either. Not enough tension. What other groups do we have? Well, I don't think I can solve as we are because this one here, I can't put tension on it with anything that I have. Even if it's the last thing I do, I can't then get out of the level. So... Something needs to change. Even though it was looking so hopeful. Where does this go up to? Yeah. And there, but now I'll never get to that one in the center of that group. Which is going to be a trouble. So, I was trying to start with the most restricted tiles. Now I can't get to this one because I can touch it, but I can't lap around it. There's no good to me. How many islands do we have in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, I think, among all of this. Seems like a pretty simple start. For all, not, for all I know, I've tried it once already, but we will attempt to progress. I like that a lot as well. We can always do it this way if we want to hook into something else, but now I still have problems with this piece here. So, this angle just doesn't leave enough room. Oh, I could do that. Now, how do I get down to everything else? and still leave room to do anything? Answer is, I don't. <laughs> I 
Well. Hold on a second. That works. Then we can come around here. That works. Then it's just these two left on the right hand side. There must be a way to do this. Time come too far for there not to be an answer for these last four posts. But two of them at the top, very, very restricted, which is scary. Because I can't come back past this. And that doesn't catch that edge. So close. So very close. But I can't do this. That is part of the solve. Can't go under the bottom edge. So I don't think that's going to be it. Because the rest of it looks really good. But I can't see a way to finish. can't walk around this corner piece here. This is just set dressing. Okay, what if we do something else before that one? Is there one I can do before that one? So those last two on the left can basically be done at any time, which is fine. So what's the last one we functionally do? That one. How am I going to hook that onto that? I am completely uncertain. Alright, let's take a mental picture. We go off to the right and then through the center. Can't hook that to there. That works. And then I can come under here and go all the way around the outside edge to there. That works. And then previously we came across the center in some way, which we should be able to replicate in this moment. that pin here presents a problem with this arrangement so perhaps that instead because then we can get out where are we going with that to here and there and then these last two to finish 
Lovely. Very nice. Right. Interestingly, not as many three-edged limitations. Just this one here, I think. But there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zones here, but some of them are really bizarre. Like, this is one just on its own. And this one goes on a massive journey. can get in there. But now this piece here is completely inaccessible, which is no good to me. Let's not get too locked into attempting to resolve our very first notion. But it's just so massive. That's certainly no good. Like, I like this because it's very self-contained. Same there. This still feels good. is this. Though I have doubts about this being next. <laughs> Although I could follow the lines I've already made to cut across. And suddenly this looks great. So close. There's going to be some arrangement of this. Surely. Just how am I doing this one? with the two edges. Perhaps I'm leaving that for a second. Because I can still use that individual one at the bottom as an anchor point to help solve this four pin problem. So knowing that I have that as available as kind of like a free loop downwards. Go through that gap. It's so close. There must be something in these last five pins, I'm sure. That leaves that, then, as the problem, child. Hmm. 
got to be something here. such an awkward shape, isn't it? Just to get around this last square here. feel so confident in the rest of the puzzle that I don't want to unpick all of that other progress. Because what was the last colour? I mean, apart from the fact that this is offering tension... Like, I can't solve this guy that way. Which means I have to solve it this way, which means I'm using these two for tension. To that. Otherwise, maybe there was something else I could do. Just this. It's so annoying. Something here. It's got to be. It's got to be. I don't have to use that one yet. Oh. I didn't think I could hit that angle, but apparently I can. Wages on how tall this level is. Ah, uh, not as tall. One, two, three. Are there only four zones here? Just much more spread out kind of things. Can't touch that one. So, while this looks like it might be good, it traps off a bunch of the other pieces I need, so probably not that. So which one first? Okay, that's interesting. I like that as well, keeping everything contained in the bottom half. These two other zones, though, are really interconnected, aren't they? So this is actually this. But 
not that. That angle can't go to there. I can't do both of these at the same time. So I'm pretty happy up to here, I think. One zone left. I'm dubious. Because of the border of this one here. I think I'm going to need to rearrange just to accommodate this guy. That's the last one. What if here we cut straight over? That looks like it's going to be better, doesn't it? That leaves me with more room. Oh, no. <laughs> so rude. Oh, that's so rude. Okay. What could I do differently? It's hard to unpick when so many lines just turn into white line soup. Definitely can't be that. Could we do this instead? There you go. All right. Not bad. what looks either the simplest to get started with as a full zone or the most complicated thing of all time. That's a reasonably simple start. Can't loop around that. What do you even go to? That, weirdly. But the one I've just crossed there is totally inaccessible now. I can do that pretty easily. Leave that other one on the right as something to go and be hooked over and round again. There's a lot of really chunky stuff here in the middle. How am I going to get resistance on that? With great difficulty, I presume. I 
Yeah, that was never going to go well. So these two, very simple to start with, but doesn't leave me much in the way of good options, I think. Okay, what other starts can we do? Similar but different. Again, I leave this one inaccessible for that. Because the other thing I want to do is I want to create groups near the center so that I can walk freely past them afterwards. Like if I could get around that, I would have a lot more freedom going around the center. Okay, that I like. If I do it this way, I can do those as well. Then I can do those. Can I then do these? What do we have left? Just two pins, and I can do a great big swooping lap of everything. Provided I can get back through this gap. I can. Lovely. You might think that being the sole pilot and navigator of this vessel would make me the captain, right? Well, no, sadly. It's filament court protocol to assign an off-ship captain, for reasons known only to them. I have a theory it's to prevent a mutiny once all the rations run out and we start eating paste. Our captain is called Swan. It's unfortunate, but the anchors seem to have completely fried all long-range comms, so we're cut off from her for the time being. She's sharp. She could have gotten us out of this, I'm sure. Oh, not that you aren't doing a fantastic job, by the way. There's so many little things hidden everywhere. You know, I've been aboard a few ships with pretty dire issues in the shower department. The Alabaster is not one of them. We've got it all. Good water pressure, dials that actually perform as advertised, and a seemingly endless supply of hot water. I'm sure you can appreciate that, as a traveler yourself. I mean, your ship is pretty compact, I bet your shower is tiny. You, uh, you have a shower, right? I'm going to choose to believe that you do. Is, oh, the Filament Corporation Magazine, 1970s and 1979, volume four. I need you to bear with me for a second because I've got a vent here. When we were all selected for this mission, we could submit requests for things we wanted to have on board. These requests would be evaluated on costs and necessity and whatnot. Now, the Filament Corporation were pretty accommodating on the matter, but there was one thing I requested that got denied. I wanted a dance floor. You know, one of the ones with all the colored tiles and flashing lights? Now, I know a little unreasonable, it was a long shot, but think about the morale benefits. Unsurprisingly, my request was denied, whenever I was fine with it. 
But then I get on board and find that they've given Canary an entire pool. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't a pool just a hole in the ground? Well, you're right. It is just a hole in the ground. A hole containing 400 gallons of water. Do you know how heavy that is? Heavier than a dance floor? And you can't spill a dance floor. The amount of coffee consumed here is unfathomable. It was here that Canary would lead our morning briefings following the mandatory workout session. You know, it's interesting, all this technology and we've never really improved on an honest cup of coffee. Sure, we have plenty of ways to make you feel less tired, all of which are far more effective than coffee. Yet, here we are, still drinking the stuff. I think it's in the ritual of it all. There's comfort in it. Let me tell you, whenever I had a coffee in my hand, there wasn't a thing Canary could say to irritate me. She knew it too. Clever, really. So many things. And it's like incredibly pleasant to just wander around and investigate. Ugh. So empty. Almost clinical. Why is everything lined up like that? Just so you're aware, this is how everyone's bedroom looked before we moved our stuff in. Minus the fish, of course. Canary sure loved her fish. I think maybe she related to them on a personal level, you know? All cold-blooded and scaly, blank, expressionless eyes, her mouth doing that thing where it opens and closes all the time, but nothing of any value ever comes out. No, she was all right. What? Oh, uh, I, uh, I don't think I want to talk about this. Not now. Dead crewmate? Maybe never. It looks kind of like a memorial, doesn't it? Did we do all the rooms? Redeem this code for a surprise. This is crazy. I've never been in here before. If Canary found out about the state of this place, she would flip a... Wait, what did he do to the bed? How did he sleep? This man is an enigma. I remember hearing about this creature on Earth, right? A farm animal? I heard they slept standing up. Maybe Aubergine was the same. He did have augmented legs. Come to think about it, I also remember hearing that a common pastime of Earth folk was to tip over these animals while they slept. Oh, suddenly I find myself filled with regret, dreaming of what could have been. All right, well, with some more puzzles and some more lore, we will see if we can round out those next time. For now, thank you very so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the series. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, put them down below. Otherwise, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.